and gentlemen, boxing is alive and well in the Big Apple. Welcome to the Paramount here in New York City's Madison Square Garden, where tonight, main events in association with Madison Square Garden presents professional boxing for your entertainment. All the bouts tonight are sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. The three judges assigned by the commission for this first bout, doing the scoring on a 10-point must system, are Don Ackerman, Don Nodiger, and Barbara Perez. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of all the action, referee Luis Rivera. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the gold trunks with black trim and weighs an even 158 pounds. From Pensacola, Florida, this 1988 Olympic silver medalist is undefeated with a record of 15 and 0. All by knockout victory, ladies and gentlemen, presenting Roy Jones Jr. And across the ring in the blue corner, his opponent wearing the green trunks with white trim, weighing in at an even 155 pounds, from Guadalajara, Mexico. He's ranked number two in the world by the WBC and brings an outstanding professional record, 44, eight and one, 36 of his 44 victories by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, Jorge Vaca. I want to clean fight. I don't want grabbing punches, no kidney punches, no low punches. Any knife down, go to the further neutral corner, and I stay there until I tell you to come out. Three knives down, the fight that uh, end the fight automatically. Listen to my command and protect yourself at all times. Good luck. Roy Jones Jr. says if Vaca decides to fight, it will not go five rounds. Vaca, we saw on TBKO last September. Stunning ending to Mark Vreeland's career well, in Baca, Sacramento. Vaca will fight. There's no doubt about it. So if, if that's the case, Jones thinks he'll, he won't last five. Is scheduled for 10 middleweights. And Vaca is fighting. Comes right after him. Goes right after Jones. Well, he did, and he caught him with a nice little short right hand and hit a few good body shots already. And Jones showboating a little bit, craning his neck out towards Vaca, then smacks him with a right hook. And Roy Jones got a tremendous left hook. Oh, yeah. Look at the quickness of his hands, Joe. Vaca Watch has got hands, okay? to keep that right hand up. I just noticed right there at the beginning of the round, he threw his own left hook, did Vaca, and dropped that right hand. If he does that, the speed of Jones may catch up to him. That's exactly where he had Breland, this, this type of situation right here. He had Breland helpless, as we hope to show you a bit later on. Jones at various times, because of his speed, has been compared to an Ali for quickness or a Sugar Ray Leonard. He definitely has the speed advantage over Vaca. Low left hand thrown by Jones. Oh, sharp right hand. Well, Vaca just got out of the way of that right hand and tried to counter with his own and, and came close himself, but neither of them landed solidly. That Jones lands against the ropes. Roy Jones Jr. goes to 16 and 0 with 16 knockouts with the big left hook. Vaca wanted to leave town and hurry this afternoon. He'll certainly have the opportunity this evening. Well, I'll tell you, he's, he's going he's gonna to leave town with his head hanging because that's really a devastating knockout, and that really could spell the end of Jorge Vaca in this division. Here we go. Here's a little replay of the setup here. Jones leans in with a right hand left hook. Uppercut. This is where he had Vaca on the ropes where Vaca shouldn't have been. Really nothing tremendously solid except a few uppercuts landed in that sequence. But here's the knockout here where Vaca's against the ropes again, and he's going to drop that right hand, and look, one left hook, bingo. That was it. You see the devastating power with just that one shot there. We're going to get another angle of this. Here's Jones. 
the right hand of the body and Vaca trying to counter with his own right uppercut but his hands are dangerously low for sitting on the ropes with a guy with this much speed like Jones and bingo that hurts here we go one last look at this and I I'm not sure if it's the same angle or possibly a different angle it is a different angle look at that Jones just countered right off of Vaca's jab and uh, leaned in and through that crushing left hook and that was it lights out so those who criticized Roy Jones's quality of opponents will take a closer look now when you're as good an athlete as Jones is and as much talent as he has which we even saw going back to the Olympics you knew that uh, he's ahead of his time really even for 15 fights he's real composed you saw how relaxed he was and he's got I mean devastatingly quick speed great left hook from Roy wow. Jones Jr. you know th this the kid Jorge Vaca. this kid Jones is going places because Vaca doesn't get, usually get knocked out that easily all right let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official decision ladies and gentlemen referee Luis Rivera reaches the count of 10 at 145 of the very first round here in the Paramount of Madison Square Garden this young man's record now 16 and 0 16 knockouts for Roy Jones Jr. He hot dogged just a little bit early in that first round, and then apparently one of these guys who will back up his actions with a solid left hand. And Vaca still sitting on a stool just contemplating what has happened here. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for Jorge Vaca from Guadalajara, Mexico. He's going to be all right, let me skip the hand. It has been a tumultuous day for Jorge Vaca. The copy box for the entire fight. Roy Jones Jr. landing nearly half of his 47 punches thrown. Vaca actually threw a bit more, but you see his land percentage. None of them did any damage to Roy Jones Jr. And then Jones, the only real statistic that counts, that big left hook at 145 that ended it of the first round. And Joe Goosen's up in the ring with the winner. I'm here with, I'm here with Roy Jones. Roy, yeah. did you think you could put him out this early with one punch like that? Well, I told you yesterday that uh, it would be a very short fight once I figured out that um, I had everything on course and um, I seen that they was making a few excuses. And uh, I told you and everybody else that came to my room, I said, if you do ever take the fight, it won't be a long fight. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think this erases a lot, uh, a lot of questions in people's minds about the, the uh, quality of opposition? And now that you've had this type of opposition, who would you like to step up to next? Well, you know, I don't know yet. It's, um, it's according to what my staff says, you know. Me and my staff have mutual agreements on everything. And um, I listen to what they recommend or what they think should go on or what they have in store already and then I'll just think it over and if I like it I'll say if I don't then I'll say what I think but right now I was just concentrating on this one fight so until I get home and get me a little rest we'll go after that we'll go um we'll go through some negotiations and then we'll talk about it all right was there any time in the fight that uh, you were concerned about the, the power of Vaca or about his pressure that he was putting on you or did you think you had it the whole time uh, Vaca threw some good real good punches at me uh, he even caught me with one uppercut that was a real good uppercut and um I decided that I started to move around and say, well, let me box a minute. Then I thought about it, and I said, well, I better go ahead on and do what he want to do. He want to trade. Let's trade. We'll find out who got the best lick. And that's what we did, but he couldn't take my trade. And I knew he wouldn't. As soon as I warmed up, you know, I knew I was going to have things flowing, and I would get him. And I'd like to say hi to my mom and everybody back at home and everybody everywhere, all my ball buddies and everything. Let, let me get back to what happened earlier uh, today, or yesterday, I should say, at the weigh-in the the weight what was the problem with your weight why were you two pounds over and how did you guys finally rectify the matter well I wasn't two pounds over my contract said 157 I was about 157 mm -hmm. really my weight I was about 157 maybe uh, an eighth you know mm -hmm. but um then I went and fit a couple did a couple things to get the eighth off and I got over there and it said like 157 and a half close to 158 and the guy kept pushing the scale over and they kept arguing arguing but they had been arguing about the 157 after that's what I've been seeing on the contract the whole time the day before we had a press conference Wednesday no Thursday yeah, Thursday. Thursday. And they started arguing when they seen me Thursday about the 157 and 156. But I paid no mind. I just kept working, and I worked hard to make that weight. And, um, you know, if he would have turned it down, I just would have said, hey, well, I did my part. One more quick question. Is this your last fight in the 50s? Are you moving up to the 60-pound division now? Uh, maybe I will. Maybe I will. I don't know yet. It's according to what comes up. All right. Okay, Roy, tremendous fight. Congratulations, and good luck to you in the future. Hope to see you again.